Okay, welcome back everyone. So what we're going to see in this video is something called a Hello World program. You may have seen these before depending on if you have some programming experience uh, prior. But a Hello World program is the really the simplest program that we can write. And it's a program that just displays this Hello World message to the screen. That's it. All right, these are these are really famous examples that Hello World is, is used constantly for an, as a starting example for pretty much every programming language that you can find out there. It's a way of just showing like how the, you can write the simplest program you can think of and so it's a super popular example um, across all so, uh, sorts of different programming languages and it's often used to show that you not only how you write a very simple program but that you're actually able to run it and get it to work as an example to make sure that everything's working and you're able to run it on your machine. Uh, my assumption, this is the beginning of a programming review portion of the class, okay? You've, my assumption is that you have four to six weeks of programming experience, and what we want to do is we want to take that programming experience that you have previously and make sure that we're grounding it into C programming language, right? And we're going to look at how C uses some of the programming constructs that you've seen in the past, such as if statements, loops, that kind of thing, but some of that in a, in a future video. Okay, before we do that, let's look at the simplest C program that we can write. Uh, here's an example of a Hello World program. All right, and I will run this in, in just a moment. Um, but when we look at a Hello World program in C, let's look at a, a couple basic things we need for our simplest uh, C program that we can write. Okay, first of all, I want to just draw your attention here to where we see this print F line. Okay, print F. Okay, printf is something built into the C language, and this is allowing us to display information to the screen. Um, everything inside of these double quotes here is going to be displayed to the console. When I say console, I'm really referring to as your computer screen. Okay? Double quotes means text, display text information. Okay? Specifically something called strings, we'll talk more about that later on. Everything inside the double quotes is considered text that we're going to display. So we do need to have that. Okay, we'll talk more about why later on. All right, so we're going to print everything to the screen inside of those those double quotes. Okay, return zero is our way of ending the program. Zero indicates success. The program ran successfully, and we say, hey, the program's done. Okay. Um, we have this main, right? Here is the main function or the main method here is a entry point. This is this is where the program is really starting to run. Okay, it's your entry point, the starting point of the code. You have these curly brackets are used, and this is you know you can see there's a lot of similarities in a lot of languages. You've probably seen something like this um, with your prior experience, well, regardless of the language you were coding in. Uh, but open curly bracket, closing curly bracket. This defines a code block. Code block, it's basically saying this is all contained inside of that main function. And inside of that function, so this is what the this is basically defining the program that we're going to run. All right, we're going to display something on the screen, then we're going to quit. So we've got these two lines inside of the pro inside of the main function here. Display some information, and then the return says quit, quit while indicating success that the program ran successfully. Okay. Now, one other thing that we need is we have this library, right? Libraries are used to contain information that has been written by others, okay? Uh, you don't want to write all the code that you can possibly ever need from scratch. Uh, you want to be able to reuse code that's been written by other people. Libraries allows us to use code that other people have written that would be really, really helpful. And we're going to include that at the top of our program, okay? Using this pound include and you know, written this way here, okay? We'll talk a little bit about how to write the code and, and following certain rules called syntax later on, which is effectively the grammar of the language, but more on that at a, at a later point, okay? So uh, right now, I'm just hoping you get a kind of a little bit of a look and feel for how the code comes together. We'll build upon it later on, okay? Um, and before we actually run this, I wanna talk about, well, let's actually, let's pull it up, right? So here I have, um, the code is written in an extremely similar way. I actually see some slight differences. Let me just kind of point them out. Okay, we've got um, our code here that we're, um, our, we've got our two libraries that we're using in this case, right, defined at the top of the screen. 
Okay, it's more than we actually need. We've got our main, right? This is where we're defining our program. And remember, notice when I click on one of the curly brackets, it highlights the other one. This shows that everything in between here is a code block, okay? And, I, and you want to indent inside of a code block so that you can make it easier to see things, okay? It'll still work if you don't, but you want to, you know, we're going to talk more about this, about how we want to have the code be organized and, and be easy to read. Notice inside the quotes here, the color changes, right? We're going to print this out to the screen. And I can use zero to indicate success, or I can also use exit, um, as ex exit success to indicate the program ran successfully. So I'm going to do something here, right? I'm going to click this button, okay? It says build project, okay? And what that does is it compiles, build is, a, is another term for compile, right? It compiles the program, right? It says build successful, so it was all successful here. And then I'm going to click this arrow here to say run, right? And when I run the program, let me get this so you can see it, right? I ran the program. Notice down below it said hello world was printed out. It was printed to the, uh, to the screen. Okay, so that's effectively what the program does. It prints hello world to the screen. Now, um, let's talk a little bit more about what you just saw because there's actually a couple key pieces of information that are relevant here. Um, first of all, we talked about compiling, right? I hit that button to compile, also shown as build in, in the environment that we were just looking at. Well, what is that, right? What is compiling doing? Uh, well, compiling is, is transforming your program into something that your computer's processor can understand and run. You will take future courses later on that go much deeper into this process and how this all works. We don't want to go too deep into it now. It's not worth it, right? We want to keep it basic. But what do we need to understand at this point in the class? What we need to understand is that we're taking a human readable program, a program written, written in C, and when we hit compile, or we hit build, we're transforming it into something that's machine readable, right? That's actually in binary, ones and zeros, right? Well, humans don't really want to look at thousands or millions of ones and zeros, right? It's, it's not really something that our brains are adapt to making sense of, all right? But the computer can. Compiling transforms it into something that the computer can understand, okay? Now, things can happen during the compiling process that causes it to fail, right? This transformation from a human readable program into something the computer can understand, right? If you make a mistake, um, it's, you know, which will happen, you can have errors that occur that prevent actually having this machine readable program, also known as an executable created. And I can do that intentionally, right? I can come back here, we can look at this program here. Let's say I forget this semicolon, okay, which is required. Now notice, it's actually right now it's telling me that there's an error. If I try to compile it, I'm hitting compile, okay, and notice it's actually telling me that there's an error on line seven. Okay, now seven, it actually error, you know, sometimes it gets you somewhere close to where the error is coming from. It's actually took place on the previous line that caused the problem later on. Okay, but what that effectively happened here, right, was by making a mistake in the programming, the programming logic, okay, we did not, we were not able to go from this human readable C program to this machine readable executable, okay? It failed, there's a compile error, okay? And so we'll go through looking at those errors and looking at how to, how to approach them, right? How to fix them, uh, more on that later on. Okay, but right now I want you to understand that compile step and really kind of what's going on there, okay? It's making sense of what's happening with our Hello World program, okay? And I also want you to understand a little bit about what we're, that coding environment that I showed you that example in, okay? We're gonna use something called NetBeans in here. And NetBeans is an example of something called an interactive development environment. Interactive development environment. Most often people call these IDEs, right? IDEs, interactive development environment, okay? That's, this is our where we're programming. Now, I chose NetBeans for this class for a couple of reasons, right? For one, it's free. Second, it's, it's good. It's, it's a popular platform. It it's also can be used for multiple languages. Later on, towards the, the 
last like one third of the semester, we're actually going to be coding in Java. We can use the same environment for doing that language as well. So it allows us to have, stick with one standard environment. IDEs are useful because they make coding easier. Okay, they simplify the process of how to compile the programs, how to debug them. That's basically fixing problems that occur. We'll go a lot more deeper into that later. They provide syntax highlighting. We'll talk about that as well. You see how there's different colors that happen that mean different things, right? That makes it easier to read the program and look for mistakes, okay? And they just standardize the process, okay? So uh, we'll be using, we'll, uh, we'll walk through a later point. You're gonna have some information about how to set this up on your machine. Okay, how to use some of the features that it has to offer, but I wanted to point that out just because you're seeing me use it here um, to be able to make sense of what I've been doing. Okay, so here is I effectively am using NetBeans and I'm clicking this build icon here to compile the project and then this little green arrow to execute it. Okay. All right. Um, I'm just going to show you a couple other little things um, related to this example, this hello world example, before we wrap it up and, and end this video. Uh, let me just mention a little bit more uh, deeper in terms of what libraries are. We saw those at the top of the program here, the hello world, this very top part, this include. Okay. A library allows you to reuse code, right? Reuse code written by others. And the example here is that that printf function, that printf, we saw that that was in the code, something called printf. What that printf means is actually something that somebody else built. They built the code that actually allows to displaying that, that information to the console, right, to the screen. Um, and it's, we need to define that we're using the library to be able to say, hey, we, we want that functionality, right? We're gonna use a couple libraries to start std lib for standard library and std io for standard input li um, output library. Okay, we'll go deeper on it later. Key thing is that they need to be at the top, right? If we, an example of what happens if we don't include the standard input output library, right? Because it's, because the, what, the, you know, that library defines using printf, if we ignore it, if we ran an example without having it, we'd actually would get an error. Okay, so we would get an error if we did not include this that's in this example, the second line there, because we get an error indicating that we don't know what printf is. Okay. Let me show you that example. I'm actually gonna cause this to break again. Okay, I'm gonna take both libraries out. Okay, I'm gonna try to compile it. Okay. And we're gonna actually get, a, we got a couple errors going on here, right? Including this one that says that um, there's an issue the declaration of function printf. It really doesn't know what printf is because it's defined in the library. Okay, it's defined in the library as well as we get another one that doesn't know what ex um, exit success is as well, right? Because that's defined what that is in the library. Okay, you'll get more practice. It'll sink in as we move forward. Okay, but libraries that contain essential code that we want to use that's been written by other people. Okay, and you can build your own libraries, we'll actually see doing a little bit of that later on in the class. Okay, uh, one other thing to note, right, is we can do something where we have a, a end of line or a new line, this backslash n. Backslash is a, something called an escape character. It means we're displaying a special character. Or we're using a special character. Things that you can't really type easily on the keyboard, like a new line, um, a tab character, things like that that are special, um, we want to be able to indicate them with this backslash. Look, the easiest way to explain this is to show an example. Okay, let's come back to our program here, all right? And I'm going to create a second printf, and I'm gonna say something like second line, or, or, or let's say, just say, uh, how about welcome everyone? Now, I'm going to compile this again. The error will likely go, should go away when now that I've recompiled it because I fixed it from before. Okay, that compiled successfully. I'm going to run it. And I want to show you what we see as the output. Okay, notice this hello world and welcome everyone was on the same line here on the console. We look at this output. Okay, 
make it a little bigger so you can make sure you'll be able to see it. Um, on the same line, right? Well, how do we fix that? Backslash N says make a new line. Okay? Make a new line so that we have hello world on one line and welcome everybody on the next line. Okay, so I'm gonna re I made that change, I added that backslash N. Okay, compile it, I'm gonna run it now. Okay, now, now we see that they're on different lines. Okay, so that's what the backslash N is. Might as well introduce that now, right? We're gonna build this up uh, little by little. Okay, and then one other thing, I'm just gonna show you one more thing and then we're gonna wrap up this first, this, this first video here, is something called comments. We'll go deeper onto this later on uh, as well. You know, the one hard part about starting uh, with a new language and starting programming is there's a lot of little topics that you kind of need to know before you can kind of start doing something that, that is fairly useful. So it's, it kind of tend to introduce a lot of little topics at the beginning, uh, and then we're gonna, we'll have a lot of time to practice and be using these things. Comments are something that the compiler ignores. Okay, the compiler ignores them, um, so they're really not part of the logic of your program. These are for you and other people that are looking at your code, aka me, TAs, etc. Okay, they're part of making sure that your code is organized and readable. Okay. We'll talk more about strategies of how to effectively comment code later on, but right now I just want you to know how to do it. Okay. Now, if we want to comment a single line, right, we're just basically making a note, a little bit of a comment so that we can read what the code's doing, right? Two slashes, okay, this is a single line comment, comment one line. If we do the slash asterisk and then end it with an asterisk slash, we can do a multi line comment. Okay. So if I come here, Right, I can make a comment here that says, um, "Print hello world to the screen." Okay. Notice syntax highlighting. Right. This environment is making this kind of this might be even hard to see on the video here, but it's showing the color indicates that it's something that is commented out. Right. So the colors mean something. That's very helpful. And I could do a multiple line comment. Um, using slash asterisk and then at the end asterisk slash. Okay, actually don't, um, sometimes that's helpful as well. We're gonna spend time on this. This is just an introduction, but we wanna make sure that the code is readable, it's organized, it will make your life easier, right? Get you, get, you know, yourself in good habits. It makes you, it'll save you a lot of time in the long run. Right, but right now, I just really want you to know how to, how to make a comment, okay? Single or multiple line. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up. Let's stop there, right? In the next sequence of videos, we're gonna look deeper at how to start taking concepts that you've seen with programming in other courses and see and practice them and review them in the context of the C programming language. Okay, so more on that later, and I will talk to you in the next video.